Kelly, and we're going to go into the book of Revelation, and we're going to begin um, first with what does Revelation mean? Revelation is the book for the end times, right? And it has to do with prophecy for the end days. It, it talks about um, the reign of Jesus Christ, the end days as far as the Antichrist, and the events that will occur. And the word revelation itself, going to the strongest concordance, mean from the number 602, it means apocalypsis. And a lot of people think it means to destroy, but it doesn't. It does not mean destroy. It's from 601, meaning disclosure. And the King James Version uses it as manifestation. So it means, from the Strong's, it means be revealed. That's, that means that we are supposed to reveal this book. It is supposed to be revealed to the servants of Jesus Christ. We're going to go to Revelation 1 and 1 through 3. So, the book of Revelation sent to John. It was in 90 AD. That's 90 years after Christ um, was on the earth. He changed time, or not time, he changed the date. Changed the date, and that's why we have um, Year of Our Lord. Even in the Constitution, it was signed Year of Our Lord. Um, uh, it was given to John, a prophet, a servant of Jesus Christ, when he was in uh, on the island of Patmos. And the book itself has to do with the past, the present of that time, and mostly in times and into the, the millennium of Christ's reign, which is after this age. Okay, so we've got notes here. We're going to go to our notes on Revelation. I think I forgot where they are. Um, okay, so. So we're going to start in Daniel 12, 4. Well, first, I'm sorry. First, let's read the chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, The revelation of Jesus, we pray for wisdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, the revelation, or the revealing, of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants, that's us, things, and John, which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So this is specifically to John at that time. Um, verse 2. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So he is going to write down what he is told. And then it's going to, we'll, we'll, we'll do that in a minute. Verse 3, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So he's going to write this down and when it is the right time, People will understand this, and they would they will be blessed indeed. Now we're going to go to Daniel twelve four. Daniel is 
coincides pretty much with revelation. So we can we can learn that in chapter 12 verse 4 of the book of Daniel it is written but thou O Daniel shut up the words and seal the book now this is this he's talking about the prophecy of Babylon and the, the end days and what's going to happen and the Antichrist and in Jesus Christ said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of in Daniel, by Daniel, in the, in, then you know that you're very close. So, um, Jesus Christ witnessed to this book that this is, a, um, this is a true book. Um, and in verse 4 of chapter 12, it reads, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So Christ said that when you see what happens in Daniel, that, that he spoke of, then you know you're there. But he told, but Daniel was told during his time from the Old Testament, he was told, I think this was in 530 years or so um, before Christ was on, on the earth. So this was a prophecy at that time. And Daniel was told to seal it up, that he wasn't supposed to understand it. So Christ came on the earth, and he said, when you see this prophecy spoken of by Daniel, when you saw those things, we're not going to go over all of that because we mentioned a little bit of it in our last last. Um, meeting and but he's saying when you see these things so that would be for those people in the end generation who understand those things and he we read that it says many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased And I would think today we can all see that there is a lot of knowledge being released about who, about the lost tribes being found, you know, now they, they know pretty much who they are, about um, just everything. We can, a lot of people today know things that were not known, you know, even a hundred years ago. So, you know, this knowledge is definitely increased. Um... And then um, I wanted to go to 12, 8 through 10. And Daniel is, is speaking to two, two angels, I believe they're angels, are speaking to Daniel. And it goes on down to verse 9, and, and um, we'll read. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Verse 10, many shall be purified, hopefully that is us, and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So that's, that's pretty clear. And then they go on and they talk about more prophecy. And then you go down to 13 and he says, Go thy ways till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy light at the end of the days. And that, I think, is, I think is pretty sure the end of the book. But they gave Daniel prophecy that he wasn't supposed to understand, but it would be released in the end days for God's people to understand. So we want to understand. Um, then we're going to go to... 1132. We got there. 11. Okay, so 1132 actually tells us the, a prophecy about how the Antichrist comes in. And 
we're not going to go over all that. And a lot of things, see, we can learn from history. A lot of things that happened in the past are happened so that we could see what's coming. Um, so that's a little bit of the first part of what I wanted to talk about. Um, so I have at the fifth seal, the sealing of God's people. So we're going to go to... That why that's important is the fifth seal is for us. That is the, the time that God actually seals his people. That's right before that happens at the fifth seal. Oh, I know I want to read this. Okay. okay. Daniel 3, 14 through 30. Daniel um, chapter 3 verse 13 then now this is we can learn from history because you know history always repeats itself and this is about suffering we can learn a lot about this um, protection trial the purpose um, so let's just read it and see see if we, anybody gets moved verse 13 then Nebuchadnezzar that's, that's the king of Babylon. In his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. So what has happened is the king of Babylon has set up his um, system. And apparently these three people were like um, favored. And they had much wisdom, and they stood with God. Well, when they, the other people in the, the area found out that they were not going to worship and follow the system, the king of Babylon was very mad, very angry. So they had this furnace that they were going to put anyone who did not follow the system in, hence persecution. So let's see what happens. So they brought them before the king, 14. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship it, the golden image which I have set up? 15. Now if you, be, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackcloth, sultry, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Now we're in we're in the our, we're in the fifth seal of prophecy, and that's the sealing of God's elect. That means we are calling wisdom is being released, and people are being called to righteousness or to to their to wickedness. So they've just been, <laughs> we can go back into Dan and see, we, they've just hit, God's people have just been delivered up because they would not follow the system. So they answered, 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. 17, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Now, they have some faith, right? Wow. Okay. 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So they're like, we are not doing it. You might as well kill us now, because we not, we're not going to do it. 19. Then, now I believe that God wrote, this is here for us to learn from and to help us 
build our faith and our trust in God and to give us wisdom and guidance in, in things that we go through. Um, so they said, we're not going to worship it your way. We're not going to do it. We're going to stay loyal to our God. 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage, visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. So he's going to kick it up a couple notches. <laughs> 20. And he commanded the most mighty, you know, they talk about the ovens, right, of the, the Holocaust and all of that, so, you know, this is like a big oven. Um, verse 20, And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. 21, Then these men were bound in their coats, their, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the fire was, it was so hot, even on the outside, that it sl people were slain just from standing from the outside of it. 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three bounds into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So they're basically standing in this oven, walking around, not alive, with Jesus Christ. And if, you're, if you've read the Bible before, you know that walking through walls and breaking chains and loosen all those things that Christians are supposed to do. This is no, this is no mystery. You know, it's another dimension that sometimes God allows his prophets to, and even everyday people sometimes, if they're close enough to God, they can see things that the average, you know, flesh mind cannot comprehend. <laughs> 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar, I want, I want us to see how they handle this how to, and how it ends up. The whole point of their, their, their going up and being um, delivered. I want us to see where this, what the point is, where this goes. 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. 27. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be God, wait, I'm sorry. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded, and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. So they got delivered up, as we've learned that will happen to the two churches. They will be delivered up. And the Holy Spirit will speak in the book of Joel, the Pentecostal tongue. The Holy Spirit will speak through 
God's servants. That's why he tells them, do not think about what you're going to say or premeditate. Just let the Holy Spirit speak. And what happens when that, when that, after that happens? What, what's the purpose of that? What happens here when they're delivered up and thrown into the fire? King Nebuchadnezzar is converted. He's converted. <laughs> well, we'll read it and, and we can get the real word, okay? Um, 29. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall 